Bucket with Gio. Got a great show for y'all. This is Uche Eke. I actually grew up with this kid. Uh, he's a funny dude. And we're talking about him being the first Nigerian Olympic gymnast, his Michigan experience, and his gymnastics background, and much, much more. Super excited for this. Let's get to it. All right, this is episode one of At the Bucket. I'm Gio, and I'm here with Uche Eke, a.k.a. Uche Mantello, a.k.a. Papa Uche, a.k.a. the first Nigerian Olympic gymnast. What up, bro? What up, dog? Hey, there you go. <laughs> Represent. Yeah, it's great to have you on. Um, yeah, it's an amazing thing to have, you know, one of the guys that I grew up with, um, you know, get to be in that conversation of, best in the world and being able to compete at that level so before we get into all that though let's take it way back tell the people where you're from tell the people where we both came from yeah we came from fairland gymnastics sports and aquatic center (laughs) you know it's in pg county maryland Hey, I'm yeah. from Moco. You guys know what that is. <laughs> Moco, sweet boy. Montgomery <laughs> 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 County. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, I just want to touch on that a little bit, just because I know for me, Fairland was a very special place. You know, it got you know, it it's not like the biggest gym. You know, not everybody. You know, when I went to OU, no one really heard of Fairland. It's like, what, what gym you went to? Fairland's like, well, I have no idea. It's like, oh, well, yeah. cool. But like, uh, yeah, talk about Fairland and what your experience was there. So, you know, Fairland was awesome. Uh, started at the age of four. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember my mom took me to my first practice and I was asleep in the car, didn't want to get out. So I actually missed the first practice. But <laughs> Um, you know, like the first coach I had there was Coach Liu. Yes, um, shout out to Coach Liu. Um, <laughs> and um, you know, he was great. Um, he saw that I had like potential in gymnastics because I believe I did like a tuck plant or something at a really young mm-hmm. age, and then mm-hmm. from there he just moved me to level four at mm-hmm. whatever age I was. And then you know, training throughout. Um, met coach adam before he went to college Mm -hmm. actually ran into him at his college (laughs) i was like nine years old (laughs) it's always yeah it's always crazy seeing you know coaches outside of the gym like what that's crazy (laughs) i was dropping off my uh like my friend kevin's Mm -hmm. uh older brother to college Mm -hmm. and i was like coach adam (laughs) (laughs) but um that's hilarious Other than that, you know, like growing up, training with your host here, Giovanni, just Sony, Um, (laughs) and I had Tyler, everyone, just all the older kids, Mm -hmm. and um, I wasn't in your group at first, I was in the younger group Mm -hmm. for a long time, and then when Adam came back, we all started working together. Mm -hmm. That was was a special group, I remember that last year with you know, me, you, Tyler, Justin, yeah. uh, Holden, all level 10s. It was just a special group of people. And it was like, especially because we were not like um, in the biggest gym, like we, it was like, we never had like a team uh, before that. Like it was like only the later years where like we actually built something and we're like, oh, dang, this is super, super fun. It's so much fun to have that. And those are memories that I always cherish. It's like so much fun competing against you all the time and like yep. trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to do all these things. And uh, oh man, I just remember the days when I was actually better than you on pommels. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, all right, throw back. <laughs> Let's, all right, a little story. Um, <laughs> Coach Lou used to make us do uh, like hit a certain amount of circles yep. for like a um, whole team. I just want to say I'm sorry, JoJo, <laughs> because like Deeran would go. You guys uh-huh. remember Deeran Lutchman from Navy? Yep, yep. <laughs> he would go do like 10 circles and fall. <laughs> and 
then um, oh my god did, <laughs> if we each did 30 it'd be fine right. it was yeah. like yeah it was like 300 circles between like seven or eight of us and so it was like his mind, his thinking, Lou's thinking was like, if you guys all do, you know, 30 to 40, you're going to make it easy. But then, you know, all you guys would do like 10, 20, and then it'll, it'll go to me and just be like, I have to do 70 circles right now. It's just, <laughs> hey, oh, I did my it would happen every single time. <laughs> I did my 30 some of those times, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man those are just good times man just like um being able to remember those moments and like just the the start of that of your career and all of our careers in gymnastics it's yeah. it's something special to reminisce about and like shout out to Fairland too like um you know we're all doing our thing you know I went to OU um Deeran Lutchman now is at Navy Donovan he's at Ohio State now we got you going to the Olympics <laughs> <laughs> so it's like yeah. it's it's something cool and I just want to like highlight that a little bit more um just to you know shout out to Fairland and show love to where we all came from I think that's super mm -hmm. important and you know something to yeah. take away from is you know you don't have to be going to this the big gyms you don't have to be going to um you know have the best equipment to be able to do something special with your gymnastics so um, last question really about Fairland is like, what's something that stuck with you um, from that time? You know, um, just seeing like, you know, when we were young, we saw like Eddie Crane mm -hmm. doing like, to Eddie. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> He's like, doing Cirque now. It's like, you got well, him all over the place. It's awesome. All over the world. So mm -hmm. like, just, you know, growing up, seeing him do like all those crazy things and then like the triple back on floor before yeah before yeah. like everyone else is doing it you know mm -hmm. he's like one of the first if not the first mm -hmm. um and like so that just you know inspired me to like stick with it you know I want to do that you know I want to mm -hmm. do all these cool stuff and then just having like a team that you know I hung out with you guys like you guys are, are my boys you know I didn't really hang out with anyone but especially like middle school especially like mm -hmm. I didn't hang out with anyone other than like my boy Kevin, mm -hmm. Andy, Ian, Danny, all of them. Mm -hmm. But um it was just you guys. Like we would mm -hmm. hang out, you know, I ate my Pop Tarts every day. <laughs> you you yelled at me for wasting my mom's money <laughs> with a dollar twenty five every single day. Uh, <laughs> you would always ask for my chicken bakes too. <laughs> <laughs> I would buy them off of you or something. <laughs> Yo, if y'all didn't know each other, was uh, I made money on that. I would be, I would bring an extra one just for, for just for y'all. Yo, bro, yeah. give me five dollars for that. And then it was also fun, you know. Like, of course, we always got into arguments and stuff. Like mm -hmm. the whole team just argue with each other, but you know, it's all out of love. Like, yeah, you know, yep. Donovan hated me. You know, <laughs> oh, he hated me too. I remember that. <laughs> um. Beard, we always. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. He's a grown man now. <laughs> I know, yo, he's got a beard and everything. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> man, like that's all of them, man. I would love to get them on the show. Oh man, that would be so fun. That would be so much fun. Um, awesome, bro. Just yeah. like we came from Fairland, dog. We mm -hmm. all have Fairland blood. You know, we'll never mm -hmm. leave me. Always represent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's something, that's a mindset too. Like all those contests, all those things that we used to do, like, I feel like all of us still have that mentality and that's just helped, you know, helped me. And I see it's definitely helped you, you know, with the um, going on to college and getting to that next level. So like, let's talk about that a little bit, you know, um, obviously I remember when you were, you know, trying to go to um, different schools, you know, sending out videos, what was that process like? Because you know, not much, not many people knew about us. So like, it, it was hard to, you know, get your name out there. How was that? Yeah, like, honestly, like, you know, my parents aren't <laughs> good with technology. So, <laughs> so like, I had, like, it was all because of you guys, you know, like, you mm -hmm. guys took videos of me and stuff. And like, mm -hmm. I remember we came into the gym one day, we we're like, yo, we should, like, you got to send videos to the colleges, because mm -hmm. like, no one knows a Fairland really. Like, right, right. Although yeah. we do well at nationals and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's like Fairland. Right. No one's no one's really looking for us because yeah. it's, there's there's not that name recognition. 
And that's definitely something what I learned because I was a year ahead of you. And that's yeah. something that I learned. And I think, I feel like I, I kind of did it a little late too. So like, I didn't get, I feel like I didn't get as many as responses as I could have. Um, and so like once, once I did that, you know, I, I like, fortunately I got to OU and it was a great experience for me, but like for you, I was definitely like, yo, you got to do this now and like be able to yeah. do this. And so I remember you, you know, sending me um, or showing me, you know, the email back from Michigan. What yeah. was that like, you know, having that feeling of recognition for that? It was, it was awesome um, until I applied to the wrong school. But... <laughs> I didn't hear about this. What what'd you do here? <laughs> Dude, so I didn't even know I got into Michigan <laughs> until <laughs> nationals because um uh-huh. apparently my parents knew, but like, dude, I applied to Michigan State. Um <laughs> and I got in. So then, you know me, like I was like, all right, whatever. Like I see these emails, like I'm already in, don't do anything, like yeah, yeah, not yeah. thinking about anything. And then like I believe it was either uh jeff corrigan mm-hmm. uh emailed me or something was like yeah we haven't gotten received your application <laughs> or something like that and then i had to wait till like um uh, so i applied late basically uh-huh. instead of early mm-hmm. um and so yeah like i found out at nationals like right after the competition um i was hanging out with donovan uh-huh. um and like some other people maybe Darren mm-hmm. was there and then like he just walks over to me he was like yo so you ready to start coming in in the summer and I'm like wait I got in and he was like <laughs> what <laughs> and I was like huh he's like oh uh, uh. <laughs> and then I, I went over to my mom and she's like yeah you got in Bob. <laughs> And I was just like, whoa, you know. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, because so yeah, usually at nationals, that's that's like, you know, late May, June. You already know, you know, like you already you usually already know by that time. Um yeah, where you're going. So with the, I was rotating with like my teammate apparently. Mm-hmm. Like and he knew I was coming, like, <laughs> but I didn't. I remember he was wearing like a I forgot who it was, but they were wearing a Michigan shirt. And uh-huh. I'm like, oh, Michigan. Fly there. He's like yeah, man, I'll see you. I'll see you soon. And I was like, <laughs> like, yeah, like what? <laughs> You're just <laughs> you <know>? so clueless, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you already know, man. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Oh man, I did not know that. That's so so funny. Oh, <laughs> Honestly, man. every school I applied to was the wrong school, but uh-huh. like, <laughs> You applied to Ohio College instead of Ohio no, State. No, Ohio <laughs> University. Like, I, I, I was, like, talking to them, and then they said they'll send me, like, an app or something. Uh-huh. And then the next email I received was, like, from OU, and it said advanced application. I was like, uh-huh. oh, that was quick. So then I applied, and I got in, and I was like, all right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm happy that worked out for you because that could have went uh, a whole nother way. <laughs> yeah, like, but I always wanted to go to Michigan though. So. Yeah, yeah, it was it's amazing. I mean, you've had a an amazing time um, with you know that program. Um, talk about that transition from Jo to college. How was that for you? So, um, since I went er- in early. I was with Anthony McCollum, um, Matt Whitaker, and Emire Cole. Mm-hmm. Um, so Anthony and Emire roomed together. Matt roomed with a football player, and I roomed with a wrestler. Mm. So, um, <laughs> like, my first experience, like, I walk in there, and then, of course, I want to see who my teammates are. Mm-hmm. And I went there with uh, my boy, mm-hmm. Nambi, mm-hmm. and um, I'm just, like, playing music just like you know it's college so i gotta yeah. just bump music, you know and um, then i just see matt whitaker <laughs> walk in he's doing this or <laughs> and then i'm like who, like who are you and he's like oh the amigos i love the amigos and I'm like, what and he goes i'm matt whitaker nice to meet you we're teammates i'm like nice <laughs> just then, straight out the gate y'all were wiling out already <laughs> yep and then um 
met Anthony and Emire, but Anthony was giving me the cold shoulder the whole time <laughs> until like, I don't know, a week after or something. Uh-huh. But yeah, then when, when I first like went in the gym, you know, um, I remember Matt and I were taking it like really serious. Like before practice, we um, used to like go on like a run outside or like they had like a pull-up bar and we did our own workouts mm-hmm. and I'm looking at how strong he is. I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> like <laughs> I need to get strong. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and then you go in there and everyone's doing like Maltese's and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> coach Chow was like, let me see your rings. And I'm like, nah, I don't <laughs> <want to do." laughs> so, uh, okay, let me not- tell the audience about Uche, bro. <laughs> On high bar, or on rings, you know, in 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 high school in jail, this man could barely do a press handstand. <laughs> he would be on P bars, on here, <laughs> kipping up at press, and it it's just like, oh man, I I just wanted to like, that's just so funny to me, you know, like, cause that that's like that level of college is just like a whole nother level, and it's like you you have to realize, yeah, I gotta step my game up, cause. Yeah. I, I mean, I was the same way too, you know, like when I came in and I just realized, oh, dang, these guys are legit. I need to, I need to get my, get my stuff together, right. be able to right. get my basics good. Cause oof, that was, it's a, it's a rude awakening coming in that freshman year. Dude, like my pommel dismount, like I mm-hmm. did it. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> but then the coach was like, all right. First thing we're fixing, <laughs> yep, <laughs> you know. <yep. laughs> I fixed it though, so yeah. yeah. Like I just gotta say, man, like that that evolution of your gymnastics is like from these, you know, past couple of years from your high, you know, senior year in high school, and to doing, you know, the things that you're doing now is incredible. Not just you know the big big skills, you know, obviously you can do those, and you are doing them in high school, but just that foundation that you built in college is like it's you know night and day now and you know you know coming into practice being able to do those presses on rings doing all that you know it's it's huge and I think that's something that's super important and what you know people got to realize about gymnastics is you want to do the big skills you got to do all the little things first too so it's so tedious but you have to do it Mm -hmm. yeah for sure for sure reflecting reflecting back on family I'm like man Mm -hmm. I wish I wish I did those 20 leg lifts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for so sure, much- man. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, dang, I could have been doing this, this, this. Like, oh, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely a rude awakening coming in. But, like, um, going off that, you know, how was your, how does that, how was that college experience? How has that shaped your gymnastics career? You know, it made me like love it more because I'm going with I'm going to practice like every day with like my teammates who are like we just talk gymnastics, you know, we're we you start living together and then you know we go hang out, do our thing, but then like you know, like when we're sitting down, you know, we can sit with our leg up. <laughs> we're, we're gymnasts, you know, like we Yeah it wouldn't be weird for me to randomly start stretching in the house, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like foam rolling out and stuff mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. they're running, you know, yeah. doing treatment nonstop in the house, talking, mm-hmm. laughing, uh, coming out with better routines, you know, helping mm-hmm. each other. So it was just, you know, yeah. good environment. Yeah. I think that's an under, you know, appreciated aspect of the college experience is you can get that back and forth with, you know, your teammates and, you know, they become your closest friends because you're with them, you know, so much. And you're, again, like you said, you're living with them. So you can always, you're in, always in that environment, like, oh, what if I do this, this, and this? And like, what if my start, what if I switch up these two skills? I can do this skill and then bump up that start. And then, you know, you get that reorganization and it's like, it's always on your mind. And it's like a good environment to be in to be the je- best gymnast that you can be. Um, so, that's really really cool um yeah what's something that you've learned that has stuck with you now um from NCAAs just that like you know it's hard to do stuff alone Mm. when you have a team like you guys can accomplish anything you know Mm -hmm. 
Like we won Big Tens, um, like season Big Tens before the season got canceled. Mm -hmm. But we're all like, we were all in that same like sad spot together because you know, like I had people to lean on. Like we all leaned on each other. You know, like stuff gets hard when time gets hard. You have other people that are either going through the same thing or have been through it. Mm -hmm. Like I had surgery. Um, you know, it was a hard time. And my other teammates had surgery too. And I remember helping them through it. So they mm -hmm. helped me. Right. And so it just makes life easier when you have like a, a group of close friends doing the same thing that you're doing and have the yeah. same goal. Mm -hmm. And although I wasn't there to compete uh, um, this year for Big Tens because mm -hmm. lost the season and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we won Big Tens. You know, I felt a part of it. I was there, you know, recording. The <laughs> but I yeah, was screaming. So you know? <laughs> yeah you were you were like the manager right of the team mm -hmm. and so how was that transition going from um yeah competing for Michigan and managing the team for Michigan you know I was just you know I was coding <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding um <laughs> honestly it felt weird like honestly, yeah. <laughs> honestly did not like that part <laughs> but but the fact that I was even to to be around them and felt mm -hmm. like accepted as like, like along with the teammates you know mm -hmm. um like i was there throughout their whole process like mm -hmm. so and like they didn't treat me any differently like i'm still a t like i felt like i was still a teammate mm -hmm. you know so it was awesome like i felt i was honestly relieved because i you know didn't have to like freak out all the time <laughs> when i'm competing you know I got yeah it is them. it is a relief <laughs> when you know you, you uh don't have to you know put that hand up and you know hit that set uh, but i also think you know it's it's a different kind of anxiety because you're not in control you have to be you have to be watching the other people go and like you just have to have faith in them and it's like it's also another type of nervousness where it's just like ah, i can't do anything about it but like i don't have to <laughs> and it's like i don't want to say something before the meet like because right. you know I, I hate it i understand when you're competing like you don't want someone to tell you a change right before you compete right. yeah, yeah, yeah so i was just like I'm just like you got this I'm like yo t uh -huh. you got this <laughs> like, <laughs> you know like stuff like mm -hmm. that <laughs> yeah and it's fun being that guy you know get that energy up do all that stuff so it's like that's that's a good thing so um let's talk about you know your time it for team nigeria when did you start doing um when did you start competing for nigeria and how did that get started so um kurt golder told me he was like we've had other people compete for like their home countries and stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about that? And I was like, mm -hmm. Hmm, I have, <laughs> you know, and that was my yeah. first year. Uh -huh. so, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm a dual citizen. Like, let's get mm -hmm. this, get this rolling. And, you know, got to start from the bottom. So like my first competition wasn't really a competition. It was like a J-O thing or something. Mm -hmm. But it was, to me, it was a training camp, you know, like, I got to do, I got to go there, um, had the chance to just compete and just like meet a lot of people in South Africa, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So that was a really good moment. And then through, uh, that coach, I met like the, the main like gymnastics federation. Um, mm -hmm. and so it's called NGF Nigerian gymnastics federation. And mm -hmm. from there I went to like Morocco, which is all African games. And that was just, way bigger than i expected like <laughs> it happens every four years i didn't even uh -huh. know that um it's basically the olympics of africa right right yeah so that's all probably, other there. right similar to pan american games i i feel like because they the do that every years? every four years yeah yeah i was talking to paul judah and he he like correct me because i said you know pan american games but apparently you know the um it's the championships if it's not every four years so it was Pan American Games last year, but this year it's the championships. So like it's yeah. So that's how it is for me too. This year right. it was mm -hmm. African Championships and mm -hmm. last and then 2019 it was all African games. African you know? games, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, all the different continents have the, you know, the games as well. That's kind of cool. You talked um, to Paul Judah. 
Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just a little humble brag right there, you know? <laughs> Shout out to him. We had a good, you know, we had a good interview yesterday. So that was pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, um, let's talk a little bit more about um, this African championships because this was the Olympic year. Um, what did you need to do coming in to secure a spot for the Olympic, uh, for the Olympics? You know, I just, just have to keep my head focused on that one goal. Mm -hmm. I've been dreaming about it my whole life. You know, mm -hmm. um, when I finished up my last practice at Michigan, thankfully I'm able to come back home, have a place to train with you and Adam nice. and everyone. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, you guys help, you know, like, enlighten my mood so I won't be, mm -hmm. like, that nervous. So mm -hmm. when I came to practice, I did some routines on some events. And then, you know, afterwards, we do a stick contest. Hey, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still the stick champ. Still the stick champ, Uche. <laughs> hey, uh, for those of you don't who do for those of you who don't know, I may lose a stick uh, competition, but I'll stick it at the meat <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you did. Oh, that was awesome. I was watching. The, I told uh, you too. I said. Oh, I was, I was so <laughs> hyped when you did that. Oh, man. That double pike was just stoic. Oof. It was a good one. It was a good one. <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit more about that competition. Um, so you needed to be... You need, to, you need to be the top two, right, in all around for or the country. So, yep. So, um, yeah. So you yeah. ended you ended up getting third all around, but the first two people were Egyptian, right? So yep. it's one Egyptian and then one Nigerian because you were the second place country um, mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Talk about like going into it, knowing what you were um knowing what was at stake what 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 was the first event that you did palm horse <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was so funny because i'm hanging out with the south african south uh -huh. african team and we're just like chilling with each other and i was like you know i wouldn't be that opposed to any lone horse although like that's my like best event but i can get rings first out the way you know uh -huh. yeah. the whole time I'm just like, rings, man. I got to get rings out of the way. <laughs> um, and then I did some routines uh, back in Michigan where I started on, what, vault to end mm -hmm. on rings. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yo, if this is the case, <laughs> then God's not on my side. <laughs> um, and then, so, like, when I was at the competition, I was like, so, like I said, I was talking to the South African team, and they're like, what event? I was like, I'd, I'd want to start on floor and then if not floor, like basically Palm Horse was my second least favorite event to start on. So like, I was right, like, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, I was like, okay, pray to God I don't start on vault and end on rings and then pray to God I don't start on Palm Horse because I don't <laughs> want to start on my best event. Right. And then, and then as I said that, like, I was like, yo, we figure out when we're starting. He's like, yeah, dude, you're on horse. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, it's not that Oh, bad. man. Yeah, I remember, uh, I remember, because um, I, I watched it, and I watched the African Games or Championships, and I remember I got right on, right on time, like, I got on, like, the person before you on floor, and then I saw you on horse. I was like, I just was thinking, I was like, oh, no, I know <laughs> starting on horse <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah talk a little bit more about that like why why is that such a uh issue for you like what what makes it what makes it so hard to start on horse so it's not that it's hard it's like you know it's like my best event like uh -huh. if if i were to fall or do something bad then mm -hmm. my whole feet is over <laughs> 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 but I did. I hit a decent set, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, you did like, it. You got those nerves out the way. Um, and then I think that's that's kind of a plus too. Yeah, like knowing you know going into African Games and being like, okay, this is something I didn't want to start on, but you know you can hit it and you did it. So 
going into Olympics, I think that's, you know, that's one of the things where you can say like, yeah, I, it's something that I didn't prefer to do, but you're able to do it if necessary, which is good. Um, and so, but a plus is the next event is rings. You get to get that over with. So um, rings is not, you know, your best event, but you, you hit, you know, it was, it was okay. Right. That press, bro. I went up, went down. I was like, no. But you no, messed like, up I, on that press. It's still. I, I got uh, stronger, bro. I yeah. Got stronger. <laughs> the old me would have just fell right oh, off. Oh man! Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's lucky. Yeah, lucky you. Uh, you've been working that press for sure. Yeah. Still, still some work to do, huh? <laughs> Those ten presses I did at the end of pra- my last practice at. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, Maryland, bro. That, yep. that <laughs> always, always remember you gotta be, you gotta work on those little things because that's what's gonna get you. Like when all the nerves are on, you know, when everything's on the line, nerves are up to, you know, all the way up. It's gonna be that's the little things are gonna be the ones that you forget about and hesitate and you know mess up on. So, yeah, kudos to you for the, that prep. Um, and on to the next one, vault. Yep, vault. You know, I was I I FaceTime my teammate uh, Ryan, mm-hmm. and I was like, I remember asking him the day before um, during podium training. So like the first day I got there, it was at nighttime, so I didn't do anything, mm-hmm. didn't go in the gym. But then that Tuesday, I said, you know what, one on six, like mm-hmm. just get through as much. I didn't really do a uh, high bar set, but like one on six, mm-hmm. and then. Um, on Wednesday, like I was talking to Ryan, I was like, uh, do I need to do a vault? He's like, man, you've been <laughs> doing that for so long. Like, why are you even asking? So I didn't even warm up vault. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just saving my energy because I knew I'd have to like run down and like change the settings. Right, and stuff. Right, right. So, um, you know, I, I just felt really confident on that. Um, mm-hmm. Even when I competed vault for Michigan, like my warm up was just crappy anyway. I like mm-hmm. vomit, but then as soon as I raise my hand, it gets like a mm-hmm. foot higher. It's that pressure, it's that pressure yeah. it gets to you. But it's it's a good thing, you know. You have that mentality of you know stepping up at that at the right moments, which is really really mm-hmm. good. And I think it's you know it's a sign of maturity being that you know confident in what you've done beforehand. And you know if. Um, if you can do that, then if you know, you can do it, you know, you can do it. Um, and that's, that's something that, you know, definitely be able to, um, have that at the Olympics would be, that's, that's what you want. That's what, that's that mentality that you want for sure. Um, and we get to P bars, you get that so, stick. <laughs> yeah. So P bars, you know, you saw I was Mm-hmm. perfecting my peach hand mm-hmm. um during podium training like i hit it perfectly like it was mm-hmm. really nice like straight leg the um you know mm-hmm. not, not <laughs> so, um but then when it was competition you know i was like okay first and foremost i gotta make sure my hanma i don't pike up into a handstand mm-hmm. so i did that i was like whoa that's perfect mm-hmm. like all right let's do this perfect lock arm peach i go for it and then like I guess something happened. I don't know, but I like missed my hand and like jammed my finger on the beach. And I was like, coaches, this is why I don't do lock on beaches. <laughs> and then I was just like, oh. So then the rest of the routine, like after the Healy, because mm-hmm. I like, like Healy's are good for me. But yeah. um, like after I did the Healy, I just reverted to my old gymnastics and did a, uh-huh. like, a <laughs> stud. Uh, just to, I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna hit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then for the dismount, I was like, you know, at times like these, you know, I gotta stick it where I, mm-hmm. I gotta stick it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, I stuck in. I was like, yeah, yeah, yep. that was pretty awesome too. Because I remember, um, I remember, you know, us practicing, us doing the stick game. Um, I won, you know, just to let people know I won. <laughs> and I was just like, bro, you, I was like, all right, bro. Like that was the, the day before you left, I think. And I was like, all right, bro, you best stick it at the meet then. And I, he was yeah. like, you're you just like, yup, I'm doing it at definitely. <laughs> and I just got so hyped when you, uh, when you stuck that, uh, double pike, I was just like, yeah, I did, yeah. My, part. I did my part. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's the number one thing that'll get that hit. Um, 
have that solid routine going into high bar, that's one of your best events as well. Um, yeah, take us through that. So at this point, I was looking at the scores. I think I was like in um, second place or something or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, like the podium train for that, I did my release, everything. It was like perfect and practice the day before so this time i was like you know what i really don't want to mess up <laughs> like let me bring it close so, uh, yep yep <laughs> brought, it, brought it real close <laughs> um yeah you were able yeah. to get it over though <laughs> yep, got it over and after that i was like smooth sail and mm -hmm. right kept telling myself don't backdoor the top half because i right. did that yep for mm -hmm. um and then you know like when i did the dismount, you know, it was just, just felt natural to me. Landed. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was fun. It was just like, I was really hyped. Um, that's one thing, though, that I'm not going to let, um, uh, that I won't bring into, like, the Olympics. Like, when I do high bar at the Olympics, there's no bringing in close. And there's no mm -hmm. bringing in the bar. You, it's gonna you, gotta, be, you gotta hit it. It's gotta be perfect. I'm gonna trust everything. Like, yep. Mm -hmm. nothing nothing to lose at that point mm -hmm. you know for sure yeah you got to go for it definitely it's i mean it's the olympics yeah like, you, you definitely got to go for it yeah bring yeah it back going to in yeah. i should have done um yeah. before season got canceled mm -hmm. uh, yeah I'm right. doing all, <laughs> doing all that. but yeah like honestly like you have the difficulty too like i've seen you do casina coleman kovacs like i've seen you do all these high level skills and so you know I think is I, I, that would be the goal for you, right? Try and, you know, get all those skills in your set and, you know, maybe, you know, get that, get to that final spot. That would be an incredible achievement. That would be insane. I mean, just going to the Olympics is incredible, but if, you know, that would, that would be crazy. You know, team Nigeria coming out of nowhere. <laughs> and I see it. With, yep. I seen it. I seen it. <laughs> you'll see me with the, uh, <laughs> my uh, green tips on my hair. Too bad Wait, it was. Yep, I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's gonna be great. But yeah, going on to floor, you were you had a pretty um a uh, pretty good lead, right? About a little more than a point um yeah. going in um in that third place spot. Uh, so yeah, what was your mindset going on to floor, and you know, like. <laughs> trying to get that set last set done so after high bar like um that's actually the only event that i actually looked at because they flashed the scores real fast mm -hmm. um and I, my start value was off and i was like wait what <laughs> so, so i was like you know not even thinking about flora yet and trying to like mm -hmm. figure out how to change it and stuff and then mm -hmm. I remember seeing like I think they messed up my horse start by a tenth or something, mm -hmm. but I'm like thinking the whole time like wow they messed up my start values I haven't even <laughs> like I didn't even double check any of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but going into floor, you know, I looked up, and then I remember telling my dad I was like, floor is my last event. Um, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best not to look at the scores. He's like, oh mm -hmm. no, you're gonna. <laughs> I know you, I you, like, you always look at the scores. <laughs> and so, you know, I looked at it. I had a little smirk on my face. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, then, and then I was just like, man, I don't know. <laughs> just, just do a normal set. Like, doesn't right, even matter. Right. I that's can, yeah. <laughs> as long as I land on my feet, you know? Right. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Because uh, they, they, they showed, like, the, the totals on the screen for, um, on the stream. And I was just like, Uche just just hit this set bro like just hit this set and you'll be good and yeah, yeah. so stayed on your feet yeah. yeah so like um i was actually really tired too uh mm -hmm. took ate some gator h's you know um and then my first uh so i did like my double full mm -hmm. front double full and i took like a huge step and i'm like oh wait <laughs> I gotta like not relax this much. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then, and then I was like, wait, don't fall. And then when I get to my dismount, I'm just like, and they're just like this, uh -huh. breathing in. And I'm just like, yo, I qualified. If, <laughs> if I land, if I land, uh -huh. like, 
<laughs> right. Do I go for a good landing, a stick, or do I just land? I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just landing, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I just landed. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you had that big, big step on the two and a half, but I I saw that and I was like, you know what? You're good, bro. Like, just <laughs> stay on those feet and you're good. And yeah, so, you know, that's definitely a huge, huge relief um, seeing that. And I'm sure for you, you know, being staying on your feet with that. Um, when it was official, you know, you had that, you qualified for the Olympics. How did that feel to know that you're making history being the first Nigerian gymnast? to represent i felt like i don't know man i just felt like really you know i i felt in disbelief for a <laughs> while um still right now i'm like uh, am i really going to olympics you know, like, <laughs> when i go back to practice though i already mm -hmm. know like coaches are going to be on it and i'm like right. all right yeah i'm going to olympics yeah. like yeah um but you know i just felt like words can't really describe my emotions for it mm -hmm. but I just felt really happy because I know I paved this way for other Nigerian gymnasts and mm -hmm. like like um leading by example that you know you guys can do it like anyone can put do anything they put their mind to you know I turned mm -hmm. a dream into a reality so mm -hmm. it's just just amazing you know like I want to I, I want to help them you know I want to mm -hmm. I would even want to go and like build a gym for them or something. Like, yeah, you know? I was, I, I was looking at like other interviews you did and, you know, talking about um, building something for Nigeria and being able to, you know, build something for the gymnastics program there. Talk a little bit more about that and what you want to do with that. Yeah. So like, I don't want gymnastics to die, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, definitely. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to like, you know, amp it up because mm -hmm. For There's sure. a lot of tough stuff people do, you know? Mm -hmm. like, it's an, Yeah, it's incredible, like, what we're able to do, like, with our bodies, the control we have. Um, yeah. It's it's not like any other sport. Like, it's unique in that way. And it's just so incredible to see and so incredible to watch. Yeah, um, all that adrenaline, too. And, like, mm -hmm. the, you got to balance. You need mm -hmm. strength. and You need everything, like, man. It takes everything. To do this sport. dude. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um kind of touched on this a little bit, you know, what do you feel like you've proven now that you've um qualified for the Olympics just within your gymnastics? Hmm. I'd say um yeah, I was super sloppy from the very beginning of time, but <laughs> You know, like whenever I reflect on my old YouTube videos of my high bar set, yeah, shouldn't have said that. Don't, <laughs> don't look it up. <laughs> don't look it up. Like you'll see that stalled it. <laughs> but I did that full in, tucked, and stuck that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and everyone was so hyped, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was dapping you up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just proven that you know like anything's possible man like mm -hmm. you can be like you can change you can make the changes if mm -hmm. you really have a goal you know and my goal was to qualify an olympics so i had to put in all that extra work to like get my body feeling right and do exactly mm -hmm. what's needed you know came up with a a plan to like i knew this would be a lot of pressure so like of course mm -hmm. i didn't want to do much difficulty like you know, I just kept it mm -hmm. nice and semi-clean. Like, mm -hmm. um, I could be cleaner, and I have been way cleaner, but, mm -hmm. hey, man, that's what pressure does. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. I think that's a good mindset to have, too, you know, knowing uh, knowing what you need to do and being able to just execute on that and being like, you know what, this competition is to qualify for the Olympics. I need to do this, this, and this. I need to be solid, and then I need to hit six for six. And you went out there and did it. And now your next trip's to Tokyo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that aftermath, though, because I saw you doing a lot of like media stuff in Nigeria, doing all these things, beating up with guys like hot head. You know, a lot of uh, guys in Nigeria that are you know pretty um, big there. Um, how has how have they like taken you in and embraced you and 
you know, welcomed you? Um, so like, you know, like no one really appreciates someone until like they do something big, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so like all of the hype that I felt around like there was, is like nothing compared to the hype I feel around my family and my friends because sure. like, those mm -hmm. are the people that have seen me grind and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, I mean, it was a good time. Um, I actually connected with a lot of people. Like I met this uh, guy who runs track and mm -hmm. he's been through it. He did some, like he's been, he understands it all and he appreciates it. So like, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I'm like the media stuff now is just to get publicity for, you know, gymnastics in Nigeria and just mm -hmm. gymnastics as a whole, you know, like everyone, like a lot of kids like really love the sport. Mm -hmm. can't let it die out um, for sure yeah, yeah that's like, why like that's why i've reached i've been reaching out to all you guys and you know obviously i definitely wanted you on the show because um yeah it, i'm on the same mindset of we need to we need to appreciate what we got because um and we need to let people know like this is something that's special um and we need to really really be grateful for all the athletes that are doing their thing and grinding and being able to um compete at that highest level um and that's that's an incredible thing and so um i appreciate you uche it's been a great talk this is awesome and i mean i'll see y'all i'll see you later bro <laughs> yeah bro i'll see you in a little bit yeah for sure um but you know after the olympics i'd definitely love to have you on again that'd be so so much fun yeah represent team nigeria right there there we go no. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh -huh. you know i can't wait to go back and start cranking some nigel music that's gonna be going great for, going for broke man you're gonna see some easy gymnastics i'm ready yep. for it. it's gonna yep. be some good stuff i'm so excited to see it um being able to you know watch all these guys compete and you know um, I mean, we've been waiting a whole year for this. Like it's yep. so it's I'm super excited for it. Um, can't wait to do it. And oh man, can't wait to talk to you again. Talk about your experience in Tokyo. Yep. Yep. Thank you. All right. I appreciate, you, I All appreciate right. everyone watching. We out. Which mad's out. <laughs> <laughs>